I call this reflection keeping my heart warm. Recently, I have been struggling with anticipatory grief, and that's the distress you feel in the days, months, or even years before you lose someone close to you, or before an impending loss of another kind. Those other kinds of loss could be the end of a relationship, the loss of a job, the loss of a pet. And I've been feeling this anticipatory grief from two sources. And I've become, some, or they've become somewhat entwined with each other. My beloved mother, far away in Germany, is nearing the end of her life, but it's still open-ended. And I was also dealing with the impending loss of one of a pair of lovebirds that we rescued in December. The female is on end-of-life care, and you may be surprised at how attached you can get to a bird. These two circumstances built on each other and became tangled together. And I found myself so burdened with the question of, will today be the day? And my heart ached so deeply that I was having trouble delighting in those small moments. With my mother, rather than enjoying sharing photos of the roses in Central Park or sending cute bird videos, I became sadder and I sent fewer messages. And I was feeling so down about lovebird Sophia that I wasn't smiling at her interactions with her partner bird and I even had trouble giving her a name. Anticipatory grief was getting in the way of my delight in those little joys. Grief comes from love, and it's a painful kind of love. I know delight is not love, but I think of it as a manifestation of what we love. We delight in our children, our pets, and the beauty of the world around us, all things which are dear to our hearts. The goal for me is not to let that painful anticipation get in the way of those little manifestations of love that we call delight. So I felt that I had to do something to lighten my heart. And thinking back to the quote from Adrienne Marie Brown, to put my attention on joy. So I promised myself to find those little moments in the day and to smile, a small smile. This week, my mother <laughs> made me smile when she managed to take a photo of the little fountain outside her room where there are poppies growing. It, it was actually a really short video, but she thought it was a photo, um, which is not bad given that she is 95 and has only had a phone for two years. I, I think we should all learn to grow this way. Um, and I'm also working very hard on not asking that question of when each morning. The anticipatory grief, it's still there, but the smiles have been warming my heart a little bit each time even if my eyes do glisten a bit. <clears throat> there is a marvelous children's book that has been helping me too. It's called Cry Heart But Never Break, and it's by Glenn Ringtved uh, with an illustrator, Charlotte Party. And in it, Death himself tells a story about two boys, sorrow and grief, and how they fall in love with sister's joy and delight. Sorrow marries joy, and grief marries delight, and thereby they balance all of their lives. And I am looking for that balance each day, too. I have a postscript. The day for lovebird Sophia <clears throat> to cross the Rainbow Bridge did come. While I was drafting uh, this reflection, through caring for her, I learned about, um, sorry, take a moment. I learned about grief, anticipatory grief, and how to keep warmth in my heart. And I am learning too from the grief of her passing, and I will learn from the other griefs that are still to come. Thank you.